Hello everyone, sorry for the delay in the faction videos. I had a computer malfunction and have recently moved to a new location. A new undisclosed freighter somewhere in the human sphere. So, but we're back without further delay and we're going to finish off with the Toa and I've got an extra surprise with a Mercs video. The Toa are an advanced alien civilization currently waging an open war against the EI and its combined army. Guardians of one of the greatest treasures of the universe, the Toa have withstood the EI's onslaught longer than any other race in this galaxy. The Toa are masters of biotechnology, which enables them to build terrible viral weapons and impervious symbiote armors, but also to alter other species, granting them more intelligence so they can fight by their side against the combined army. The forces of the Toa Trident, the name of the army, have a peculiar operating structure based on the number three, as illustrated by their combat triads. Units of three members that act as one. The naming conventions of the regiments, inspired by the ancient numerical system. Toa troops are highly professional, seasoned in a thousand battles against the EI, and have a long history of fighting, without support and hopelessly outnumbered. But the wear of endless years of war is taking a toll on the Toa civilization. They are starting to show clear signs of exhaustion, and are in desperate need of an alliance with humanity. The question is, are the Toa really willing to collaborate fully and openly with their new allies? Or will they try to sacrifice the humans just for a modicum of respite to build their forces for the final blow against the EI? The Toa are a humanoid alien species that, having built an advanced civilization spanning a multitude of star systems, act as tutors to a number of younger sentient races. The technological level of the Toa is a step above the human sphere. However, the dispersed nature of their territories and resources, and particularly the precariousness of their war economy, has gravely hampered their development. As a species, they excel in the life sciences and the so-called soft technologies, with a focus on genetic research, manipulation and engineering. They have altered the genome of some of the species of developing intelligence they have found. These modified species have remained under the tutelage, working under the Toa instructions to further their interests. Physically, the Toa are tall, slender, and with underdeveloped auditory system and thick skin that seems to indicate their home planet has a tenuous atmosphere that offers little protection against radiation from their sun. The Toa make up for their poor hearing with a special olfactory sensitivity to pheromones that has defined their language and culture. Their social disposition and importance they bestow upon the number three are the staples of their social, economic, and military structures. The Toa have been defined as a herald race. The heralds are those who have decided to use their resources in service of the Zichi Digesters. The Digesters are an ancient bio-artifact of unknown origin. The Zichi Digesters are alive and extremely intelligent but they are not sentient, even if the utter complexity of their programming can convey that impression. Their apparent function is to expand across the galaxy, each of them nesting on a life-bearing planet to act as a witness to the species and civilizations that rise and fall around them, and registering all the information in their potent brains. Once a race reaches a suitable technological and cultural stage, the digester makes contact with them so they will become its heralds. They then search for new planets with insipid life forms in which to plant a seed copy of the digester. Part of the mission of herald races is to locate other digesters from which to obtain seed copies. The copies are then brought back to the digester in their home planet so that it can absorb the information they contain and increase its wealth and knowledge. Toa Diplomacy There is a certain danger to them. Under their cool demeanor and their distant curiosity, you can sense a two-faced nature. It is clear they are well versed in the mechanisms of deceit. The Toa know how to twist laws and treaties. Their refined vocabulary fails to completely conceal the fundamental meaning of their words. They want something from us. 
and whatever they offer in return will not be worth our while. Even worse, their conscience will be clean. From the way they carry themselves, it's apparent that they emphatically approve of double dealings, schemes, and the trade of political loyalties. We are dealing with veterans in intergalactic negotiations, and clearly we are at a disadvantage. We're going to talk a little bit more about the triad. The TOA political, social, and military structures are built around the base three organization. There are three heads to their political power, three members, in several different combinations. In their family nucleus, multiples of three in their work groups, three agents in their police patrols, three combinations in their locks. Everything, absolutely everything in the TOA world comes in threes. And for them, it's strange to think outside the number three. The Toa are sociable beings and like to gather, but always in multiples of three. The family unit is composed of three adult individuals, but this arrangement is unstable and breaks when the first child is born. At that point, the family triad is restructured around the two parents and the child, and the third adult will look for a new family triad to join. No other children will be born into that family triad until the first leaves to pursue higher education or dies. At the start of their adult life, usually when their education outside their family triad begins, Toa will form a social triad. The bonds of friendship between members of a social triad are very strong, and while an individual is part of one, they will receive a second surname composed of the first syllable of the surname of each member. Usage of this surname is always informal. And since it changes over time when the triad switches members, it often goes unregistered. Solitary Toa are frowned upon and they are often considered eccentrics and social cripples with the personality disorder. When a Toa, for whatever reason, is excluded from a group, they will try to form or join another as soon as possible. Should they fail, what awaits them is ostracism and social rejection. The solitary Toa, who manage to overcome or simply ignore this barrier, show a different time perception and can withstand the influence of the EI with greater ease than their fellows. This could explain the trickle of defections of Sigma Trahedim, members collaborating with the combined army, and the initial difficulties the EI finds when trying to stabilize conquered and assimilated Toa territories. Exaltation is the name the Toa give to the process of altering those races with the potential for intelligence, turning them into tutored sapient races. Exaltation is a vital component of the Toa exploration and space colonization program. The Toa need a workforce, troops, and colonists to settle the new territories found by errant ships in their endless travels. The Toa race has a long history of leaving the hardest task to other species. Since the dawn of their scientific and industrial era, and owing to their vast knowledge of biotechnology, the Toa have genetically altered the other species to make them more suitable for their own ends. Still, the great challenge for the Toa bioengineers has been given intelligence and self-awareness to races with no more than certain animal cunning. When a new planet with minimum habitability and natural resources is found, the Toa start a biotic mapping to search for indigenous species with the promising pre-intelligent potential and manipulation capabilities. If the species has the needed qualities, including a good rate of adaptability and survival in planetary conditions, and can fit into realistic development parameters, the Toa will initiate exaltation. The exaltation process is never quick. To establish a developmental course, both physiology and behavioral patterns of the race must be taken into consideration. Neuronal stimulation therapies have to be adapted to each race's peculiarities and must overcome their biological rejection against the invasive treatment. The conceptual basis for the exaltation process is to give the brain the target of the target species a more complex neural structure as early as during the embryotic stage. As a result, the species will enjoy improved intellectual capabilities, optimizability for tool use, and perhaps additional sensory pathways. All these modifications must be genetically coded into the target species so they will remain a dominant part of the genome, thus enabling the, its evolutionary viability as a sapient race. 
When the Toa develop an effective therapy for a species, they synthesize it to be spread using a viral propagation vector in a controlled population. The first generations of the exalted race are born under natural conditions, but are subject to constant supervision. Under Toa supervision, the new species is expected to create its own language and develop a characteristic system of traditions and ethical or religious beliefs. However, simple proximity usually causes language devised by the new race to be little more than a dialectal variant of the Toa languages. Additionally, the perceptive and cognitive models of exalted races tend to be conditioned by the conceptuality and mimetically dominant culture of the Toa. The Toa will also guide the newly exalted race in colonization of their planet, which must be adapted to the needs of the Toa. Members of the new intelligent species will be trained as skilled workers and technicians to reinforce Toa industries on their planet. Simultaneously, the Toa will prepare the emergent species for the task of colonizing other worlds. To this end, its members will receive basic training in ecophysics and planetary engineering. Under constant Toa supervision, the exalted become the main workforce in the colonies and muscle behind the colonization program. Additionally, the new sapient race will join the auxiliary troops of the Toa Trident in their critical fight against the forces of the EI. The newly exalted are a priceless influx of personnel to the ravenous fronts between Combined Army and the Toa Trinominal. From the ranks of the adversaries of the Toa, numerous criticisms have been raised about their hypocritical do-gooder attitude regarding their exaltation program, accusing them of creating slave races for their own purposes. Shawak scientists claim to have proof that the Toa have used behavioral patterns of subconscious submissiveness on the exalted species. With a genetically coded submission instinct, no race could truly be free to live an independent life. They would be forever condemned to suffer under Toa rule. Furthermore, the Shawak scientists accuse the Toa of altering the normal physiological and cerebral development processes of the exalted. By accelerating these processes, the exalted would develop towards adulthood faster suffering in exchange a significant drop in their life expectancy rates. According to the Shawak scientists, the purpose of these alterations was to create fully functioning servants in a little, at as little time as possible. However, during the war between Toa and the four Shawak nations, all records were lost and with them any evidence their scientists might have possessed. What's more, none of the races exalted by the Toa, not even the oldest and most advanced, like the Chaksa and the Kaldinuk have ever raised their voices in protest at the treatment they have received from the Toa. Of course, the silence of the subservient might only confirm the Shawak accusations. The Toa are known for using combat tactics that make the most of their biological advantages. Mirroring their civilization customs the Toa Trident troops form three member combat groups. Members of these groups usually have different military specialities and stay in continuous silent contact via Korota. These units, called combat triads or simply triads, are highly coordinated and their tactical effectiveness is remarkable. For organizational purposes, the designation code for a combat triad is created in the manner of a social triad surname using the first syllable of the genetic patriomatic of each of its members. During field operations, a numerological code in Varso Battlespeak can be used instead to maintain confidentiality. Gregorious instincts are so strong among the Toa that Trident troops form combat triads naturally each time the board of operations assigns them to a new tactical intervention body under supervision by an officer in charge. The same impulse makes them rearrange themselves when one or two members fall in a triad breaks. Often survivors from a broken triad try to form another as soon as possible with other veterans and even with new recruits. The Korata is so precise that the mission of a single pheromone packet is enough to ascertain whether the Toa are tactically compatible. Thanks to the Korata, 
These realignments take place even on the field, in the middle of a mission. They are a clear example of tactical flexibility of the Toa. Talk a little bit about their symbiotics. One of the most emblematic traits of Toa Biotech is its widespread use of symbiotic organisms and bio-artifacts. Runahas Biosphere was rich in highly advanced symbiotes that served as a springboard for the Toa technology. Perhaps the most representative symbiote in Toa history is the Ra'ak, no, a creature of variable size that covers its host to protect it from danger, much like a shell. The Rahakno symbiote, once adhered and adapted to its host, depends completely on it for oxygen and nutrients. To protect its own life, a Rahakno is instinctively drawn to protect the life of its host by any means. The Toa managed to adapt the Rahakno symbiotes to their physiology, turning them into living armors that could only be removed when the symbiote died. Using extensive processes of crossbreeding and hybridization, the Toa were able to improve on their Rahakno symbiotes, making them more resilient and effective. Nowadays, Toa symbiote armors, called Vorm, are a veritable pinnacle of their biotechnology, and surpass the Rahakno armors of their ancestors by far. But some of the ancient traditions are kept, such as the Sarno, the armor wake, in which the warrior spends the night wearing their new symbiote armor while it adapts to its host. Depending on the disposition of the symbiote, the procedure causes the host to experience pain in a range from discomfort to mild agony. Once the Saarno is completed, the piece of armor can never be worn by another Toa. A problem with born symbiotes is that the Toa scientists have so far been unable to improve upon their weakness to fire. Flames cause so excruciating a pain to the symbiote that it cannot help but pass it along to its hosts who usually dies of synaptic overload and cardiac arrest. Modern symbiote armors can abandon their host and re remain alive, but to prevent them from sustaining metabolic damage over time, they must be kept in special containers where they are placed in a lethargic state until needed. Research into biocomputer networks and interfaces between them and the TOA have led to the design of intellectual augmentation programs. Going one step further than the technologies used in the exaltation of other races, the Toa have experimented with themselves to develop symbiotic artifacts, symbio artifacts, to improve their neural processing capabilities. These devices are broadly used by many Toa, from researchers to pilots to operators of complex technological systems. Advancements in this field have reduced the public interest in the development of sentient artificial intelligence like the EI or Aleph. Alright, and that about wraps it up for the TOA. But what I'm going to end this with is an off the record remark by Sun Chi during a recess in the negotiations of a TOA contact treaty. This is on the Evening Star orbital base, low orbit around Paradiso. What irks me the most is the recurrent feeling that the Toa want to use humanity as a new disposable army in a secondary fight to keep the EI from paying attention to something way bigger. Alright, that's it for the, this week. As I said, there will be a Mercs video shortly after this one, so be prepared for that. Since we've got all the factions done, I'm going to move on to the Paradiso conflict. So we will discuss that at length, and then we'll maybe get a little more faction specific, or maybe uh, if there's a certain topic you want me to discuss, hit me up in the comments below. If you like tabletop gaming, comics, movies, pop culture, just laughing, whatever, Check out our tabletop gaming and podcast channel, The Tabletop Talkers with the Zed. If you like Iron Kingdom's lore, check out our sister channel, Allocating Focus. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time.